So, happy birthday to Wayne Rooney. That's how we're going to start off this episode of Talks with Tosin. Reason why I bring up Wayne Rooney is because 20 years ago, Wayne Rooney made his Manchester United debut. He scored a hat trick against Fenerbahce in the Champions League. Manchester United went on to win that game 6 2. 20 years later, Manchester United go to Fenerbahce and they draw 1 1 in a very abject performance. The reason I bring up that game and I bring up this game today is because you can tell the standards have dropped the Manchester United very, very drastically. It's no longer a club that, if you're a staunch supporter like myself, somebody who supported this club for decades, it's no longer the club you recognize. You now are become what you made fun of, the Nottingham Forest of the world, the Liverpools, those sort of people that you used to make fun of, you become that. You're telling the ghost story to the kids about, in my day, we used to be good. We did. But it's 2024 and you're not good anymore. And you have to accept that. Betches and the football club are abject. And as a fan, there's no more anger. There's no more just any sort of emotion, just apathy. Just you feel apathetic to it. You're just like, Okay, I expected this. Manchester United played against Fenerbahce. Eric Ten Hag decided to play Nasser Marzawari as a 10. Play Marzawari as a 10 sums up Eric Ten Hag as a manager, sums up his time as Manchester United manager. It says everything about him and is nothing good. That's really what I can say. I'm going to read you his quote as to why he started him as number 10. Away from home in Europe, hectic ambiance. To start with four attackers is too much. What does that even mean? You're starting a right back as a 10 and you're saying four attackers is too much, but starting a number 10 is not too much? I mean, starting right back at number 10 is not too much? I'm so confused that I can't even speak English. I don't understand what he's trying to say. As somebody who understands or speaks Dutch, Please tell me if I'm tripping as to what he just said, because I, I don't understand it. Him playing Marzouar as a 10 was a failed experiment when you had Ahmad Diallo on the bench. Even if you don't want to play Ahmad Diallo, you could even put Xerxes as a 10, Foyland as a striker. If you don't want to do that, Casemiro can come in and push Eriksen up top to the 10. If, even if you don't want to do that, you can go with three at the back. There were so many other ways to play that you didn't have to play that man as a number 10 and then come up with that excuse post-game. That's number one. Number two, the wide space that Manchester United were having, the way the defenders were defending, it was not pretty. It was not good. You can see Marcus Rashford was trying to cover Dalot's back so much. There's a point in time when Marcus Rashford ran all the way back and Dalot was still up. I don't know what Eric Ten Hag is teaching the boys. I don't know what Eric Ten Hag is trying to do, but it's not good. It doesn't look good, and it's not fun. Nobody's having fun. Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag is a failed relationship. Some people have been in relationships and can understand that where, you know, you know it's time to break up. And when I look at United and Eric Ten Hag, the writing's on the wall. It is time for both parties to end the relationship. You're both going to sleep to each and next to each other, facing each different side of the wall. There's so much cold in between. It's not fun. The kids are not happy. The food is cold. The house is not warm. It's not fun anymore. The relationship has ran its course. And obviously, United fans are going to blame Ineos because, you know, that was a saving grace. And I understand, you know, that the Glazers were bad for almost two decades. And they've now rocked the club to the point where, you know, it's just not, it's not it anymore. The standards aren't high. And I get it. Ineos came in with his big bravado, Tyron, Dan Ashworth, Omar Barada, Jason Wilcox, you know, a lot. They hired all these guys. And me and United fans wanted an immediate thing. But this is going to take a long time. You have to sit in for the ride. It's going to take a while. I don't know if any of us are going to be good or not, but give them a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. And, you know, it's just bad, you know, being a United fan. You're seeing Rob Dawson, bless his heart, trying to, you know, appease Eric Ten Hag and say this and that. It's not good, Rob. And we all know it. We all know what a standard match United club is. And again, I'm going back to the ghost stories. In my day, we were good. We're not good anymore. And it's okay to admit that. You know, it's okay to admit, hey, we're not good. And that's how you fix things, by acknowledging the situation at hand and what's at present. And presently, Manchester United are not good. You can see in the way the players are playing today, there was no sort of like, when the players, especially the midfielders, are trying to bring the ball up the pitch, there was no composure. You know, there was no players that could really hold up the ball, take their time and invite the press with Fenerbahce and pray and play out of that press. Everyone was rushing the ball. Everyone kind of felt like, ha, 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 I have to get it out, I have to get it out, I have to get it out. And there was no sort of cohesion there. That was not, those are some things that I noticed at least that was not fun to look at. 
Um, you know, it, it just it just wasn't good. Um, Garnacho, he's a threat from time to time, but he's also a weapon at the same time. He's not, you know, Garnacho is still a young kid and he's goldfish member. You know, sometimes he will mess up, but he will try and try and try and try again. Um, but I'm not a big fan of, you know, just the over, you know, just, I need him to calm down a little bit. Um, but that was bad. That was really bad. Just everything that happened. The only saving grace today was Andre Onana. He has been stupendous all season. He's been incredible. He has been very, very good. His double save, as Jose Mourinho said in his post conference, which by the way, he talked a lot of mess. And he got a red card today, but Jose talked a lot of mess. Please, if you haven't seen his quotes, go look at his quotes. Jose said some crazy stuff. But there are some stats, you know, and again, Andre Onana. Get your flowers. There were some stats where, excuse me for looking down, I have to get these stats right because when I read them to you and you listen, you're going to be shocked. Manchester United's last European away win was a 1 0 victory over Real Betis in March of 2023. That's one stat. Manchester United have won just one of their last 11 games in Europe. They are currently 21st in the Europa League and 12th in the Premier League. Man United have only won nine games this whole 2024. They have zero wins against Palace, 20, Porto, Fenerbahce, Brighton, and Villa. This is just bad. Seven of the last 22 Premier League games is a win. They haven't won. That's just bad. Just really, really bad. It's all these stats are damning. All these stats are damning. And, you know, every Ten Hag, he tries, he does his thing. But you could tell, you know, from the Marzuari experiment at 10 to the lack of minutes Ahmad has been playing recently. Something's amiss. Something is not going right. And like I said, it's a bad breakup. Um, you, can blame, you can blame the players. You can blame the Glazers. You can blame Indios. Everyone has to get their shh together. Okay, I'm trying not to curse. But everyone needs to get it together immediately. It's not a good look. It's not a good look for anybody. Um, it's not fun as a fan that you know exactly what's going to happen when your team plays. It's boring. It's abject. You're falling asleep on the couch watching it. If you're in the stands, you're just bored. You're tired of this. And something needs to change because this is the last international break in November until February. And truly, honestly, I believe we're at Ten Hag. Both parties should figure out ways to just amicably split. I think it's time for both people to go their separate ways and just figure out what's next for each individual in their career path. And Eric is a, you know, he's a fighter. He's going to keep saying over and over again, I want two trophies. I should be here. We're building something. But come on, bro. There's only but so much line you could do to yourself. There's only but so much line you could do to us. We don't want to see it no more. It's not fun. May not have West Ham on Sunday. And the run of games is going to be an interesting one because I don't know. I don't know what to expect. You know, it's so Jekyll and Hyde with this team. Some days they'll play well, some days they don't. They play well in the Spurs. It's, you know, West Ham, Leicester, Chelsea, uh, Polk in the Europa League, then Leicester again, then Ipswich Town after the international break. So, you know, what is it going to be? You know, what, what are May United going to do next? Again, the standards have dropped. I don't recognize my club anymore because uh, now I'm about to start telling ghost stories. So this is enough. This is Talks with Tosin. We'll see what happens on Sunday. Don't forget to look at our Instagram live. We have fun coming up with Good Vibes John on Sunday at West Ham Stadium. So for myself, Tosin, we're out. Everyone take it easy. Peace. Take a shot. Take a shot.